and I ask that he be asked to withdraw no. and apologise. Order. On occasions in this House, and I've been here for heard many rulings and I've given some, it's not a matter of whether the member was offended, it's a member matter of whether the House was offended. Who got offended and why? Why did they get offended? Listen. What the Labor Party is saying is, to hell with the rest of New Zealanders, these people should be put on a commercial aircraft and dispatched Order. to New Zealand. Order. Well, you back the rapists. Order. Order. Yeah, that's John Key accusing the Labor MP of New Zealand of backing rapists. Who knew that would cause a big stir? Yeah, yeah, well, check it out. There's more to come. I'll hear from Catherine Delahunty on the assurance that it's a fresh point of order and not in any way the type of points it's of order. It's a fresh point of order. It's not a campaign, Mr Speaker. A campaign. I'd I'm like sorry. To... Catherine Delahunty. As a victim of sexual order. assault... Order. Order. I take will personal resume. offence. Would like order. to order the member will resume her seat. The Speaker basically said that you kind of hoodwinked him there, didn't he? I mean, how, does, how did that... How did well, I didn't get to finish my sentence, which was to ask for something new, which was for the Prime Minister to respectfully make a personal explanation about his comments. Because we've walked out because every young woman in this country, every woman needs to know that the women parliamentarians will not put up with this. We will not stand by and allow this to be bandied around Parliament, this kind of abuse of people and this... Uh, a way of approaching rape is simply unacceptable. The Prime Minister has to be held to account. If the Speaker doesn't do it, we have to do it. As a trustee of the Waikato Women's Refuge, Te Whakaruru Ho, I take personal Order. offence. Order. The, the member will speaker. resume her seat immediately. Order. Remain. I now will require any member who takes a point of order along the same lines to immediately leave the chamber. That's David Carter, Speaker of the House, New Zealand Parliament. What else did this kick up? Order! I am deeply offended by the suggestion that we support rapists. And the Speaker has absolutely no right to determine that I'm not offended by that or that any of my colleagues are not offended by that. Chris Hipkins. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I ask you to reconsider. There is order. nothing order. more offensive than being accused of backing rapists. Order. I am offended. Order. The House should order. be offended. We've covered that matter. Uh, well, what the Prime Minister was saying was that a number of the people on Christmas Island of the opposition are very keen to look out for and support the rights of are in fact rapists, murderers, child sex offenders. We have to remember that these are very serious criminals. What do you say to the family of Kor Rutini, who is a decorated soldier having served for New Zealand in Afghanistan, who has committed no crime in Australia and no crime in New Zealand, who has been detained by border force and held in a detention facility in Australia? Australia awaiting deportation. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't have the details of this case. All right, so I'm going to get into uh, where this all started shortly. However, let's hear uh, what the Labour MP has to say about the whole situation. There was extreme frustration from the Labour benches about disgraceful behaviour from the Prime Minister. Uh, and he was being shielded by a speaker whose behaviour is becoming more and more disgraceful as well. Mr Davis, if you want to put yourself on the side of sex offenders, go ahead, my son, but we'll defend New Zealanders. Order. John Keith has it in his hands and his power to ring up Malcolm Turnbull and say, this is not acceptable anymore. Let's sort this out. The question, but he won't do it. One he of the doesn't have the moral compass to do it. Well, the Prime Minister is clearly trying to divert away from the fact that he's shown very weak leadership on this issue, that he is not standing up for uh, New Zealand-born Australians who are in appalling conditions on Christmas Island, and that he's failing to, to show the kind of leadership New Zealanders would expect. I have taken offence at the no, Prime Minister's comment, order. and I ask that he be asked to withdraw no. and apologise. Order. On occasions in this House, and I've been here for had many rulings and I've given some. It's not a matter of whether the- So that brings us back to the beginning of the video. However, it's not the beginning of this situation. Let's digress. We're gonna go back 
to how all of this, well, we're going to go back to recent events, uh, November 10th. All right. So in this article, thank you to uh, stuff.co.nz. I uh, apologize for utilizing your reporting to report this report, but you know what? Thank you for the material because I'm just stitching it all together for other people to see. All right, so in this article here, Kiwis at Christmas Island detention able to return home in days or weeks. Okay, so that was actually stated by Justice Minister Amy Adams, right? And that reassurance came after the Australian Immigration Department restored order to that center following the riots that broke out there on Monday. We still haven't got to why it broke out on Monday. Well, here's why. We scroll down here. It's that news of the action came as Prime Minister John Key warned Kiwi detainees who wanted to leave Christmas Island Detention Center for New Zealand may have to wait weeks, but not months, to depart. All right. And then talks about potential obstacles for a swift departure included detainees lack of travel documents the need to charter private flights for high-risk offenders and let's assess the potential risks that detainees could present upon their arrival they're sex offenders remember right 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 and then the Australian Immigration Minister, Peter Dutton, confirmed there would be no prejudice to consideration of the cases of detainees who choose or chose to come to New Zealand in the interim. Uh, well, yeah, they go on about uh, who would bear the expense and blah, 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 smokescreen, blah, blah, blah. What about this, dude? Uh, I think this guy was... Uh, he was, yeah, he was detained on Christmas Island because his visa was revoked. But yeah, big mashup though. Big mashup over on the island. Riot squad's gone in. They're swinging their batons. I believe gas canisters have been fired. Rubber pellets. A guy's been shot in the leg with a rubber pellet and they're terrified. He was not aware of how many Kiwis had banded together against the guards and did not know whether fires said to have been burning at the center were still alight. Detainee Tuck Waka Tuku earlier told Radio NZ a group of detainees had barricaded themselves in one of the compounds with chainsaws, machetes, and petrol bombs. The riot squad's all geared up, ready to come in. Everything's barricaded up. All the young fellas are tooled up. They've got petrol bombs. They've got machetes. They've got chainsaws, metal bars, all sorts. Waka Tuku said rioters had broken into garden sheds to look for weapons to use against the guards. It's just going crazy. I want nothing to do with it. But all the young fellas are geared up. They want to go to war with them. Australia's Immigration Minister Peter Dutton confirmed reinforcements were called in. The government's not going to cover in the face of the activities of some of these criminals. Unacceptable. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Okay, yeah. It's a riot. I get it. People are rioting. Unacceptable. Shit's falling apart. Stunned people. Beggared belief. New Zealand hadn't raised concerns about Australia's human rights abuses at their universal periodic review in, in Geneva overnight. Um, okay. Great. Let me, uh, let, 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 let me ask you this question. Whether you're a criminal or just a simple dude who had your visa revoked and you're being detained and you learn that you're going to be detained for not days but weeks or months wouldn't that cause action to uh, create a little bit of uncomfortableness obviously aware of what's taking place you know what I'm saying alright so I'm not in the business of supposition, 
Now, I do have a little bit of invested interest in this because it does involve immigration and I've had a recent experience. However, this isn't about my experience. This is about excuses. This is about protocol. This is about how do people at the upper echelons handle this kind of shit? Well, let's listen to the excuses. All right. Sorry, that was supposition again. My bad. Let's listen to his reasoning. And I'm talking about John Key. Obviously aware of what's taking place there. Um, it's, it's a difficult situation to get all the facts on. Um, my understanding is that there could be a, a small number of New Zealanders actually involved, but we haven't been advised of any injuries to any New Zealanders. Well, my concerns would be that, like a riot at any corrections facility, there can uh, and may well be consequences as a result of that. Now, these are people who theoretically are staying on Christmas Island, choosing not to come back to New Zealand because we know, under the advice we've had from the Australian government, they could do that. Now the risk is that they uh, actually damage their own appeals because they undertake other criminal activity when they're there. So, look, I, I don't know all the rights and wrongs of the issue, and I certainly haven't argued that New Zealanders should be sent to Christmas Island, in fact the opposite, but in the end it's hard to see how they're making their cases any better. I'm always concerned about New Zealanders, but they are in a corrections facility which actually they're free to leave, because we know that. That's the first point. They're staying there voluntarily. They are free to leave. Secondly, if they have any concerns, they're absolutely free and should contact us and we will deal with that. But if there was a problem at Perumarumo, I don't think the Australian Prime Minister would fly over or the Australian officials would fly over to Perumarumo. There is a system and if they want to appeal to us and say that their human rights are being abused in any way, we've given them an utter commitment that we'll follow up on that. But it's an Australian corrections facility. If someone believes that they are suffering a human rights abuse, there's a process that they can go through of, of contacting New Zealand officials, and Foreign Affairs will provide consular support for that. Right, right, right. Then what about this, mate? Prime Minister John Key says he was absolutely correct to accuse the Labour Party of backing rapists, murderers, and child molesters, despite official information suggesting he may have overstated the case. Key sparked walkouts in Parliament on Tuesday and Wednesday after saying Labour was backing the rapists, as well as murderers and child molesters, among Kiwi detainees at the Christmas Island Detention Centre. However, an official list provided to Justice Minister Amy Adams by Australian officials on Wednesday revealed none of the New Zealanders at Christmas Island had committed murder or rape offences. Dun, dun, dun! Right? Anyway... I'm going to provide links below in the description box for all of these articles. Uh, go down the rabbit hole yourselves. I find this absolutely incredulous and completely preposterous. For no other reason than the fact that people's human rights are being abused. If you beg to differ... Put your comments below the description box and state your case. I uh, will probably disagree. Anyway, this is Robert J. Morris for EPGN News. Saving humanity and saving the silly humans. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Peace. Just as desperate as that sounds, yeah, yeah. Take